Today, we're talking about the anxiety that keeps you from starting, whether it's keeping you from starting your study session today or starting your bar prep studying altogether. This anxiety stands in your way of accomplishing your goal. So what do you do when you know what you're supposed to do? You have all the material and resources to accomplish your task, but the fear of what could happen is stopping you from even starting. Now, some may have already identified that it's a fear of failing, but it doesn't have to be. There are a ton of different fears that could be acting up. But if you're aware that getting started is a problem, then you are a couple of steps ahead of people who think that it's just that I'm too busy and I have a lot of competing priorities. Or people who think that I just have to buy a new study program or get a tutor. Oh, but let me save up the money for that additional cost. When you're in that camp, you're still thinking that the problem is somewhere outside of you. It's your schedule, it's your kids, it's your your job, your boss, it's a lack of resources, it's not finding the perfect tutor. But when you're bringing the awareness back to yourself and looking inside of you for the answer, you'll find the first question, which is, what am I afraid of? Removing the fear opens the door to the next step, whatever that step may be for you. But you won't know what the next step is until the fear has been set aside. If you watch this video to the end, I'm going to share with you how I look at fear and set it aside to allow me to move into my next steps and how you can do that too. Hi, I'm Jennifer Duclair, Bar Exam Mentor and Attorney Life Coach, helping you create a life that you are absolutely in love with. If you're here and you've been watching the videos on this channel, then I'm assuming that they've been helpful to you. So go ahead and subscribe so that you can be notified of new videos as they come out. And also hit the like button on videos as you find them helpful. Feel free to share them with a friend. When I face down fear, I start with compassion because fear is normal. And the last thing that you want to do when you feel fear is to criticize yourself or kick yourself for feeling it. So the very first thing I do is I quiet myself. I could be standing in the kitchen washing dishes. I could be folding some laundry or even sitting in front of my computer frozen from taking my next step. Whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, when I notice that fear is what's keeping me from doing what I know I need to do, I pause and I listen in. I listen in on the voice. Why are you afraid, Jennifer? What's happening? Talk to me. In a loving way, I ask myself to reveal her secrets, her secret fears, her doubts, her misbeliefs, maybe lies that people told her that she believes still today. And once those secrets are revealed, as a good empathetic friend would do, I hold myself figuratively or literally and tell myself, you know what, given what you've been through, given what you've experienced, given what you've been told or taught, it makes complete sense that you would be afraid of these things. And I give myself love and compassion. This is compassion. And this is also an act of seeing yourself and hearing yourself, which makes you feel good already. This is already soothing the nervous system and getting you out of fight flight mode or freeze mode. A lot of us are just frozen in fear and kept from doing our work. So what's the next thing I do? Well, once you find out what it is that you're afraid of, it might be helpful to write it down, especially if listening to yourself is not something that you've practiced for a while. You may want to write it down so that you can see it in black and white and be able to refer to each one by one as you work through some steps to correct it. The next thing that you would do is look at the first fear and ask yourself, you know, if this happened, if it became true, what would I make that mean about me? Usually, if you if you are willing to look at it, there's a story that we make something mean about ourselves. So let's say, for example, the fear is about failing the bar exam. You know, I don't even want to start because I might fail. Well, ask yourself, what? Let's supposing I failed, supposing the worst thing came true. What would I make that mean about me? Why is that a reflection on me? What am I saying about myself if I fail the bar? 
And this is where you're going to start to really uncover the things that you can work with in order to get past fear. So some stories might be that, you know, if you don't, if you fail the bar, you might be telling yourself, I don't deserve this. I'm not worthy of the career I'm going for. I don't have any business doing that anyway. Or it might be, you see, just another thing that you've gotten wrong in life. And, oh, you never do the right thing or you never get it right out of the gate, which is an implication somehow that you're broken or defective. It can be uh, an assumption that the, the gatekeepers have kept you out, translating it to mean I'm not wanted. There are a lot of stories that we make things mean about us. And this doesn't apply to just failing the bar exam. It applies to just anything in your life that might trigger you or hurt your feelings. If you can find out what am I making this mean about me, then you have the real issue that you can actually work with inside of yourself, independent of anybody else, and you can actually solve it just by yourself. So the next step after that is to find out, you know, this thing that I'm making it mean about me, can I know that this is true? And find out if 100% of the time this is true or what is proof of the opposite. So let's say that you think failing the bar means about you that you'll never get past this and you'll never become an attorney. Can you say for 100% that that's true? That'll never happen. And if you could, then I'd want to find out what magic all that you're looking into because you'd have to be able to tell the future to say that 100% it'll never happen. So if there's a sliver of a chance that it might not be 100% true, what are some circumstances under which it could happen that, that you become an attorney, period? Now, I can tell you this. There are some people who failed the bar exam in 2019, thought, you know, I'm going to keep trying no matter what. Then 2020 came around and the pandemic occurred and people were literally handed their bar licenses. And I know it seems like out of this world, for such a circumstance to set up. But think about the person who thinks, oh, I'm never going to become an attorney. And knowing that you have to pass the bar to become an attorney, in 2020, the door opened for a slew of people to become attorneys without passing the bar. Now, I'm not calling some catastrophic world event onto us, but I'm just giving you that example to say that life is unpredictable. You really cannot say with 100% certainty that you wouldn't become an attorney if you fail a bar. (laughs) That being said, That's just a small, well, huge, but a small example of how you can start to look for exceptions to this misbelief. And of course, we know if it starts with the words never or always, chances are it's a misbelief. But you have to prove that to yourself. You have to go looking for the evidence of it so that you can present yourself with the logical reasons why this fear can probably be set aside. And do that with each of the fears that you've come up with. Look for the opposite or look for proof that it can happen otherwise. Or if you say, hey, listen, you know, I have too much going on in my life. There's too many competing interests um, for my time. I can't make enough time to study. And and for that reason, I'm probably not going to pass the bar exam. Look for examples of people who have all those responsibilities and more, and yet they still did pass the bar exam. And if they did it, it's possible I can too. So do this detective work for each of the fears that you came up with when you were introspecting. And then once you've come up with some possibilities of how that, you know, fear might not be true, how that meaning that you gave it, the story you told yourself might not be true, then you can start to look at what do, what do I need? What do I need? So if you're feeling anxiety and fear and You find out what you made the fear mean about you. And then you found evidence opposing that meaning. So it's not 100% true. You're already going to start to feel some relief from the anxiety. But take it a step further. In this moment, what do I need? What would answer this anxiety? And some examples of, of things that come up with for me when I ask myself, what do I need? Is reassurance, comfort, a hug, um, some tuna noodle casserole, uh, some kind of <laughs> comfort usually. Comfort and certainty. And sometimes feeling powerful wouldn't hurt either. Now, what's really good is that there are ways to meet your needs for all of those things. And in this case, I will say Google is your friend. Uh, you can always you know, discover how to meet my need for certainty, how to meet my need for comfort, how to meet my need for reassurance um, and how to meet that need on your own. 
right? Um, and, you know, as I've lived through many cycles of facing fears, pulling them apart, resolving them, meeting my own needs, walking through it, and meeting that goal that I had. I've gathered together suggestions and tools and things that help. And I'm actually right now putting them all together into my Love Yourself bundle that's going to go inside the Conqueror's Mindset bundle. So if you want to learn more about that, look below. But what I love about the Conqueror's Mindset Bundle is kind of like my depository of all the tools that worked for me to get me past the bar and work for me today to help me to, you know, achieve higher and higher heights. And I, I get them together. I polish them up and make them presentable for the public, you, and then I stick them inside the Conqueror's Mindset Bundle. And no matter what point in history that you got that bundle, you get every new addition. Every new thing that I add to the bundle is yours for the same one time, you know, purchase that you made. So um, that's where you will find the latest and greatest and the tried and true from from years past. And, um, and it will only continue to grow. I'm really excited about that. So find out what is it that I need, right? Once you've worked through all the steps that bring you to this place where you realize those stories are not true, you will already start calming down. But you want to answer that anxiety. You want to build in practices that soothe you from anxiety. Now, the reason why we do all those prior steps is because I don't know if you've ever experienced anxiety arises you do something that helps, maybe a 10 minute meditation, maybe talking to a friend, whatever, taking a nap, and then you feel good, right? So you go about your day and maybe even before you try to start studying again, the anxiety comes back. Or maybe you go ahead and you're able to push through and start studying, but then while you're studying, you get an answer wrong, the anxiety arises. And then you have to go through the whole process over again. Now, if you're trying to prepare for the exam and it's coming up in a few weeks, the time consuming nature of that repetitive process is is not feasible. It's just, it's a lot. And a lot of people end up quitting or postponing the month of because pulling double duty like that is just, just uh, not enough hours in a day. But if you can do the prior steps that I just outlined to you very specifically, you can, all you need to do is just rewind this video, write down those steps and follow those steps. You will get relief, permanent relief. Because dismantling the fears and the lies that support the anxiety means that those fears and lies can't bring the anxiety back again. And if you are thorough with your search for what's the fear, what are you feeling, what's going on, tell me. If you're thorough with that step and you come up with all the fears and then you find what the opposite is and you find the the evidence to the contrary of those fears and the meanings that you gave those fears, then they're gone. They're done. You've already logically explained why that can't be 100% true. And you found the exceptions and, and in finding exceptions, you probably found solutions too. So then at that point, you can soothe yourself, give yourself what you need, be it reassurance, a hug. And I have like all the steps and strategies on how to give yourself those things so you don't always have to seek someone else out and ask other people to fill your cup. And you'll find a strategy bank with how to fill your own cup inside uh, inside my Love Yourself bundle and the Conqueror's Mindset bundle. But Google, I mean, you can search for things too. Um, I just make it easy for you by putting it all in one place and, and putting the things in there that worked for me. But once you give yourself what you really need, right, then you feel better. And then you move out into the world and go back into your studies or start your studies. Either way, having done this process, you have kicked a leg out from under the table. Now, if a table only has three or four legs, you keep kicking legs out from it, the table's going to fall. And that's that anxiety and the resistance, right, is the table. You just knock out those fears that are supporting the anxiety and it's going to crumble. That anxiety will fall away and you'll be able to do your work. So if you're watching this in and around the time that it's first published, then the um, the Love Yourself bundle is going to be uh, placed inside the Conqueror's Mindset bundle in a couple of days. Right now, the Conqueror's Mindset bundle already has a slew of tools that you can use to help yourself get studying starting today. And you'll find the Love Yourself bundle added in in a few days and you can start taking the time to really parse through your thoughts 
in a concrete way. There's a journal in there that you can use um, for loving yourself, building up your self-love bank. And there's also a journal in there you'll be able to use to follow through the sequence of these questions that I just stated for you. Um, but you can find those tools and more, or you're welcome to go online and, and start searching. I've given you the, the map. Um, you're welcome to go online and start searching and putting together you know, tools that make sense for you, you and your own personal use. But you know now exactly how I have efficiently dismantled the fears and set them aside so that I can move forward to do whatever it is I need to do. And I promise you that if you do this even 50% of the way, you will already start to feel better. And I can say with a great degree of certainty that whatever old lies and misbeliefs that were feeding your anxiety will be vanquished, meaning the anxiety will not be as strong if it comes up again. And that's only if you do this only like 50% of the way. If you do this thoroughly, you do it the right way, you dive into it, get honest with yourself and really write the, the answers down to these questions, that anxiety is gone. And when you need to soothe yourself, you already know what works because you were able to refer to the strategy bank that's inside the Love Yourself Bundle. And you'll, you're able to pull up the strategies and implement them in the moment pretty quickly. Most of them can be done very quickly, might take 30 seconds or less to implement. And they absolutely work, especially if you've already dismantled the beliefs that support the anxiety. You've kicked those legs out from under the table. The table has fallen. And now... There's nothing to hold the anxiety in place. So it's just an old memory from your body, like your body remembers tensing up when it's time to open your books. But logically, mentally, you know that there's nothing there anymore. Then you're able to pull out the tools to physically calm your body and then just get back to it. And you can do that in less than a minute because the mental stuff has already been taken care of. Your mindset has already been taken care of. And now you're just fixing a physical response, your body's response that, you know, because it's trained from a history of having a repeated uh, response to those anxious thoughts. The thoughts may come and you realize, oh yeah, that's just those old lies and they go away quickly, but your body's still holding on to the memory of feeling that way. You address the issue with your physical body and then you just get back to studying. So it's very important. And this is the reason why you'll um, find moving through bar prep in the way that we support starts to become pretty effortless and easy because we take care of the root of it first and then everything else is just maintenance. So if that sounds good to you, look below for the Conqueror's Mindset Bundle and look for the Love Yourself uh, edition that's coming in in a few more days. And comment below. Tell me your experience with anxiety. Um, talk with each other. Suggest what has worked for you in the past as well. And um, let me know if you'd like to hear more about this particular topic or any deeper topics that uh, fall under this anxiety umbrella. You can even pop in your own specific situations and I'll see if I can record a video in response to that. Thank you for being here. I love that you're here. I love that I get to do this for you and I'll see you in the next video.